Welcome to LabMinutes.com. In this video, we'll be looking at NTP configuration. It is important to make sure that your router and switches uh, maintain time synchronization. So when you look at the log messages or the debug messages, they provide you useful information, especially when the time uh, when you try to troubleshoot something. This is actually even more important when you try to do things like certificate-based authentication that's heavily dependent on time. Uh, there's possible that if your time gets out of sync, uh, the router might come back and say the certificate has already expired or it might have not yet started. In this lab, we'll be using two routers, R1 and R2, and both will be acting as NTP master. Switch 1 will be acting as NTP client. In the configuration, we will be looking at various uh, configuration that you can do regarding uh, re re relating to NTP. We will start our configuration on uh, R1. The first thing you want to do is to make sure that the clock uh, time time zone is set up properly. So we're going to do clock time zone. Here we're in Pacific Standard Time, so PST minus 8. Also, if you're in the time zone that has daylight savings, so you will want to do clock summer time PDT recurring. Next thing you want to do is to set the clock for the router. Right now it's about 9 o'clock at night, so 21.0. zero. I'm just going to do 9 o'clock. Uh, day of the month, I'm going to set 5th August 2012. We're, gonna do, we, we're just going to do exact same thing real quick for R2. I'm just going to say roughly it's 9 o'clock. Okay. Now we're going to make R1 an NTP master. So we're just going to pick straight M3, which should be, which should be high enough. Well, actually, let's t take a look at the different options that we have. You can see there's a lot of options that we can do with NTP. Okay. The next command we're going to do is the source. So we're just going to source the NTP packet from our loopback. And we can turn on NTP locking so we can see all the locking messages. Okay. The next command we're going to do is NTP access group. You can see there's a different option. We're just going to pick peer. And it's actually referred to access list. What it does is it allows you to provide a list of IPs that the router will be either synchronize the time or provide synchronize the time from or provide the time to. So here we have to come up with an access list. So we're just going to do access list 10 permit. So since this R1 is going to be pairing with R2, we're going to be providing an R2 loopback, which is host. Uh, IP 0.5. R1 will also be providing time to switch one. And this host IP is just going to use the switch one VLAN interface 4, which is 4.4. And again, this was a good idea to do the deny statement at the end to any and log so we can see uh, which are the devices trying to pull time from, our, uh, from R1. Okay, now we're going to have to apply that access list to NTP command access group peer 10. Okay, next we're going to enable authentication um, MD5. So the command would be NTP, first we have to define the key, so authentication key. I'm just going to do number one MD5, and we're just going to call it Cisco. 
Next, we're going to do NTP, telling the router which key to trust in the authentication. So trusted key. Uh, type that right. Trusted key one. Okay, so once you, usually there's one misconception of the command called NTP authenticate. Usually you only need to type in this command on the client side. Basically the client will authenticate the server, but the server doesn't need to authenticate the client. The client just need to check the authenticity of the server. So here R1 acting as a server, we would not need that NTP authenticate command. Next we're going to do NTP peer pointing to R2 loopback. Okay, let's see what we have so far. So we've got locking, authentication, trusted key, source loopback, access group, master, and peer. There's a few more commands that you can do with NTP, so let me give you some example. Max association. So that could be part of your security. What Max Association does is it's deter, it's to allow the router to basically only serve uh, or synchronize or basically test associations up to a certain number of um, peers. So here we're going to do NTP Max Association. Just going to pick number 10. Okay, there's also an NTP Max Distance command that will also provide a certain level of security. And here we're just going to say 5. And what it does is uh, it defines how far away the client should be from the server. So it's just going to pick 5. To show NTP association, see it's synchronized locally. What we're going to do next, we're just going to copy what we have on R1 and then use that on R2. Just going to keep everything exactly the same except the peer, which is going to be pointed to R1 loopback interface. Okay. And we also need the access list. Okay, moving on to switch one, which is going to be the client side. I'm going to start up the same command, which is clock time zone. And clocked summertime. And TP source, sourcing from VLAN 4. Here we're going to turn on locking. So we're going to t uh, do access list 10, permit, host. So switch 1 will be pulling time from R1 and R2. So we're going to configure both IP here. And again, 10, deny any log. Okay, NTP access group, PR10. Next is authentication key. Cisco. Tell it to trust the key, and here you need to turn on authentication. So switch one will make sure it can successfully authenticate the server before it actually used the time. 
with all those configured, next we can uh, tell, uh, tell it where to pull the time from, which is R1 loopback interface. And we can then make R1 being a prefer time source, and then R2. Okay, so you can see the locking messages that tells you that the switch one has already synced their time with R1. So if you do show NTP association, you can see a little asterisk there. It said time is already synced. If we check our access list, you can see there are matches for both of the IP R1 and R2. There you go. And now R2 is being used for time as well, with the plus being selected. Now let's go back on R1. And you can see the access list has been matched as well. Just to double check, show clock. Switch one is 912, which is exactly what R1 is. Now that the, now that the switch one has the its time synced, we want to make sure that the debug messages and the lock messages will be using that time. So the command is service timestamp. You can see there's two options, uh, debug and lock. We're just going to go with the debug first, debug. We're going to use the exact date time and we're going to use local time. We can have it shown as a millisecond and we also going to have a show time zone. Okay. We will also do a timestamp for the lock, which is the syslock messages. Here, if you try to generate some messages, you can see the time that appears for the lock messages is the actual time. You can also see show lock as well. You can see before we issued the service timestamp command, it was using an incorrect time, and after that, it used the correct time. Alright, thank you for watching uh, labminutes.com, and I will see you in the next video.